Before we get into the Army's next generation thermal night vision goggles, we have a message from our partner, Private Internet Access. Military forces around the world know how important it is to use encryption to have a secure network. Private Internet Access is the most customizable VPN service, which is part of the reason why it's so popular. It's used by over 30 million users to reroute their internet traffic through an encrypted tunnel, giving people back their privacy. Private Internet Access is the most customizable VPN on the market, so you can actually tell the Pentagon that you have a modular VPN experience. The service blocks malicious websites, ads, and hides your online activity, so you can research drone warfare for your YouTube channel all day long without raising any eyebrows. If you care about your operational security online, then you want private internet access. It's risk-free, and they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. Click our link in the description to get private internet access for $2.08 each month for three years, and to get two months free. We own the night, right? It's a popular phrase first used by US forces during the Gulf War when their night vision capabilities gave them the ability to operate at night with a huge tactical advantage against their enemy that only had their naked eye. Recently though, there's a huge problem facing our claim of owning the night. Everyone now has night vision goggles and we're forced to now share the night. The US military has never been one to share toys though. In an attempt to take back the night, the US Army recently issued the first enhanced thermal night vision goggles, which wirelessly sends your weapon's point of view superimposed onto your goggles point of view. It looks like they're basically adding some Snapchat filters to night vision devices. But this is a revolutionary new way to fight. The US military had to scramble to invent it because using the old systems of night shooting jeopardized the safety of every infantryman. It put them in direct danger by sending out IR signatures that everyone now has the capability to see. But is the EMVG worth it? It weighs over two pounds, costs 10K more, and there are concerns about whether or not soldiers will be able to get the hang of firing this new complicated way of shooting. You now have to shoot from a video feed of your rifle's point of view. It's akin to a weird out-of-body experience. More on that in a minute though. So the old legacy PVS-14 system gave every American infantryman a huge edge from 2003 to 2009, and they had a massive advantage over the enemy who only had their naked eye at night, which was good for maybe about 50 meters. The US infantry with their PVS-14s could see the enemy up to 250 meters. I'll take those odds any day. During the next two conflicts, MVGs allowed for offensive night operations midnight raids on unsuspecting high-value targets. U.S. ground forces operated with impunity at night until 2010. That's when the U.S. military realized they had this night vision problem. John Tishman and Dan Schoen wrote about this for the Modern War Institute, and they said, quote, Though the Army may have owned the night for decades, the pressing reality of large-scale combat operations against a similarly equipped force means it cannot expect to continue that dominance without a major effort to codify its night fighting doctrine, reduce the signature of soldiers operating at night, and re-examine its over-reliance on night dominance at the combat training centers." End quote. Every other near-peer major military power around the world reverse-engineered our PVS-14 technology. Even the low-budget insurgents were getting their hands on cheap NVGs which are becoming more commonplace. All of those IR strobes and IR laser beams that the US targeted enemy forces with in the past those have now become a double-edged sword that the enemy could visibly see too. It's kind of like how when you wrote a secret note to your crush in college with invisible ink, except now everyone can see what you wrote, and it's embarrassing. From an early 1976 US Army field manual on night operations, it says, quote, among the technological races the US Army must run and win against potential enemies, few have higher combat payoff than an edge in night fighting capability, end quote. For a lot of people, the first time they saw the revolutionary night fighting shooting technology was in the video game Call of Duty Modern Warfare. During an early mission, you see your platoon running around with IR laser beams, and those laser beams clearly show you what enemy you're targeting. I don't often talk about video games, but I think in this case, it really illustrates the point of just how mind-blowing this technology was back in 2004. It was as simple as placing the laser beam on the target and pulling the trigger. Without night vision capabilities of their own at the time, the enemies couldn't see the IR laser beams headed their way. This legacy system worked great when your team was the only one with night vision. But when the enemy started to get NVGs, then every time you turned on your PEC-15, 
infrared laser pointer, it became a liability by sending out a visible signature which very visibly led the bad guys right back to you. Worst of all, the Army training manuals have done little to update nighttime procedures in the face of these new threats. First Training and Doctrine Command, also known as TRADOC, is the arm of the military that's responsible for updating the Army's fighting tactics. But some of these night fighting techniques change so fast that by the time TRADOC has codified the rules, they're already obsolete. Wake up, TRADOC, we're counting on you. But the old MVGs had problems that plagued grunts who everyone knows are notorious for complaining like a bunch of children. For instance, I used the old PVS-14 system in Iraq and the complaints were endless. It was monocular, so it only covered your one eye, which gave you a very limited 40 degree field of view. The system's weight sat awkwardly mounted on your helmet, always sliding away from your eye. The green tint gave you a headache after using it for only 20 minutes. PVS-14s offered very little depth perception so when I was on patrol, I was always bumping into the person in front of me or stumbling into ditches on the side of the road. Some of that might be explained away by my clumsiness, but the max effective range for these things was only about 150 meters, which in 2009 felt like a superpower, but by today's night vision standards, it's a bad joke. Quote from the Modern War Institute, night operations in the Middle East and elsewhere have had the unique advantage of nearly total situational awareness with an unsurpassed ability for soldiers to distinguish friend from foe, and with overhead manned and unmanned platforms able to rapidly identify the edges of friendly battle space. Fighting an enemy with limited or no night vision enhancement has atrophied doctrine and tactical development in an era when even insurgent forces can employ these devices and pure adversaries carry them as standard equipment." End quote. Infrared strobe beacons were a standard operating procedure from my old platoon in Iraq. Whenever we patrolled, we had our IR strobe beacons turned on, so if you saw any friendly soldier, they were lit up like a Christmas tree through your NVGs. But if the enemy now has NVGs too, then your IR strobe is basically waving a giant red flag saying, hey, I'm over here. Technology just wasn't there yet to solve all of the problems right away. It would take iterations between 2009 and all the way up to 2019 for a true NVG solution. The first step was the PVSQ-20. It could now see not only short wave infrared, we now had thermal vision capabilities. The maximum effective range just jumped from 150 meters to 700 meters for identifying an enemy target. Funny how dumping boatloads of money onto problems seems to fix things. The next step is the Army's full solution. The enhanced night vision goggles, binoculars, integrated with the new family of weapon sight individual, these two pieces to the puzzle solved our night vision problem and returned ownership of the night to the US. Aiming with this new system probably feels like a weird out of body experience though, and we're yet to see if troops can successfully implement them in combat on a large scale. To give you an idea of how strange aiming with it is, you know how it is to shoot in a first person video game, right? And then there are third person shooters. There have been some people who have tried to figure out what a second person shooter would be like, and I think firing with this new system is the closest to what a second person shooter would feel like. And here's why. You see from your goggles point of view, and then you press a button and it wirelessly sends an overlay of your rifle's point of view on top of your goggles view. You're shooting from this detached second person viewpoint. It takes training to adjust to this complicated new way of shooting, but it's the only way to avoid having to use IR laser beams for targeting. You can also go by the reticle, which is a little bit easy and less confusing. When you first look at the EMVG footage, you notice that there's an outline mode, which you can see is more crisp, more clear, and higher resolution. It also gives the image this sharp contrast that looks like shell shading that you might see in a video game. At first I thought there must be a computer processor in there, a program inside the headset that identifies targets and outlines them but that's actually just a result of the passive overlay of thermal and IR vision. The end result is this cartoonish outline that really highlights and draws your eyes to potential targets immediately. This gives soldiers the ability to find and shoot targets faster, which could literally be the difference in a battle. Major Brian Kelso, PEO Soldier Assistant Product Manager for ENVG, hinted at the system's max range. You can detect targets at 600 meters, that's how big of an improvement this is." End quote. 
During my interview with the L3 Harris engineers, they also confirmed they had hit targets at 750 meters using the next gen fire control combined with this system. There's no longer a green tint because the new system uses white phosphorus tubes instead of green. Not to be confused with white phosphorus, which is a war crime. It has an augmented reality overlay that displays maps and wirelessly connects to other squads, allowing troops to digitally mark locations in cyberspace. These markers show up across everyone's field of view. This enhanced NVG can even work during the daytime, which makes me think we might see a far off future where augmented vision is used 24 seven during all operations, because it makes it easier to detect and hit targets during the day as well as at night. Troops using these EMVG goggles had a 100% improvement on M4 carbine qualification and a 300% improvement on detecting targets. They also had a 30 to 50% decrease in the amount of time it took them to identify then engage a target. US Infantry 10th Mountain Commander Hess said, quote, in terms of target detection and clarity, the difference between the ENVG and the PVS-14 is night and day. We're taking targets out to 300 meters and even beyond. Whereas our guys with the 14s are having trouble seeing beyond 150. There's really no comparison. This is why the army is resurrecting a decades old, long failed program called the Future Warrior System. When you can't use IR strobe beacons to mark locations, you need to now use a digital augmented reality system. The MVG now allows Battlefield Command to digitally send friendly and enemy location markers to your augmented display. And this is the dream of the future warrior system come to life. This part of the new system is still in its infancy, but if the army wants to continue to own the night, they will need to figure out how to get digital friendly markers to work over an interconnected communications network. One commenter on my Instagram wrote, quote, I think that in CQB, the PEC-15 will still be used because it's about being faster and being able to aim in small spaces without having to try to use the nods and optics, which can be cumbersome, end quote. This is a really great point because the PEC-15 will still have an advantage in close range engagements, probably anything below 100 meters. CQB urban room clearing can alternatively possibly still successfully be done with simply an old fashioned white light flashlight. So the old school torch still has a place in combat. There are some drawbacks to the new system though. The new system is not without its downsides because with the added features comes added weight. The new NVGs weigh 2.5 pounds, about twice as much as the old system. The FWS sight that goes on top of your weapon weighs about 1.5 pounds. And then once you add on the next generation fire control, which is another 2.5, and the 9 pound 6.8 NGSW rifle itself, you're looking at around 13 pounds for just your regular rifleman. It also has a steep price tag, currently costing around $23,000 per system. That last generation went for around 10,000. A second lieutenant from the 10th Mountain who tried the new system said, quote, these are capabilities I never thought I'd see in the army, but it's a lot like learning to drive a stick shift. We just need practice, end quote. This quote hints at how weird it must be to fire with this picture in picture perspective, to shoot from your rifle's reticles point of view. Because if you're a second LT in the army surrounded by news, media, and your commanders, of course you won't say anything too negative about the army's new multi-million dollar toy. I've heard other slight hints like this, where if you read between the lines, you can hear driving like a stick shift. This means this is way harder to get the hang of shooting. It's a training problem. These kinds of night vision performance increases have massive implications for everything from how ground forces fight to helicopter pilots abilities to provide close air support for a longer period of time. Close air support goes down in the past when there's too much dust. With the new digital system, Helicopter pilots can loiter over the battlefield longer and can digitally mark targets that they see from the sky so forces on the ground can have their situational awareness. When the Lancer Striker Brigade dropped video footage of what the new ENVGBs are capable of, it impressed even the most jaded of veterans among us. Jaws hit the floor looking at this footage of the new night vision because these are exactly the kind of features every infantryman has dreamed of for years now. Thank you for watching. I want to know what you guys think about the enhanced night vision tactics and strategy. I'm especially curious to hear from you if you're one of the soldiers who have experienced the old PVS-14s and the new ENVGBs. 
Follow me on Instagram at Cappy Army if you're interested in being a part of the defense conversation. If I had to guess what the future holds for us, pretty soon infantry will be replacing their eyes with robotic augmentation. But until then, Bravo 6 going dark.